Marco up against three defenders. He is cutting inside and then cutting back in. The two defenders do collide. The other one slides and he doesn't get to it. Paco takes it around the goalkeeper. If you need coins, go ahead and use the code in the description below. It is Johnny for FIFA Coin Zone. And also, if you want to play for some real money, go ahead and click the link for GamerSaloon.com and sign up. Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Schalke career mode. As you can see right here in the background, Paco Alcacer has slowly gotten better. 15 games played, 7 goals scored, 2 assists, a 7 average rating, which is good. So hopefully he can improve. Tell me guys, do you think that Paco is the right striker for this team and especially for my playing style? You guys know me, so I would like to know in the comments down below. And also guys, if you could smash over 1,200 likes, I would really love to see that, man. Appreciate you guys supporting this uh, series, especially... Currently, we are sitting in the second spot with 10 games played, 2 points behind Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich is our big rival in this one and maybe one day we'll be able to get past them. But I don't know if this will happen in this season. I've created the reserves team, boys. This is my reserves team with Meyer in the center attacking midfield position and the king, Leroy Sané, on the left-hand side. And Chupomoting will be playing in the striking position for that reserves team. And we are going to be using that team against Freiburg. I was hoping that this young team could be able to go ahead and beat our opponents with a really decent result. But you can see right here, they were the ones starting off with the attacks. You can see Klaus on the ball. Klaus, Klaus, Klaus. <laughs> and yeah, there's nothing to laugh about. We concede it. 1-0 already in the 10th minute for Freiburg. And now they are on the ball. I'm chasing it with Leroy Sané. Leroy Sané with the pass to Chupo. And his shot does go wide. Sadly, it was a big chance. Leroy Sané doing a great job once again. Having an impact on the game. It's a cross over to our centre-backs. No one gets to it. Chupo Moting pass it over to Augo. Another big chance gone for Schalke. And now it's a pass over to Chupo Moting. In the 40th minute, he has enough strength to get past these defenders. And sadly, in the last split second, Zasha Rita is able to get to that one. Now we are on another corner kick. It is Aogo once again on the ball, passing it over to Neustädter. His shot gets blocked and it is Leroy Sané picking up the deflection. The youngster scores once again. This guy is so fun to play with. I mean, he is getting these goals that are really important for the team. For the first time ever, he's not scoring between the 80th and 90th minute. But Leroy Sané now on two goals in the Bundesliga. And uh, also not too far away from Paco Alcacer actually. But take a look at this. What the hell was that? What the hell was that? Fairman, can you please explain what this is? Take a look at this shot. It wasn't, it wasn't even fast. It was, there was not enough power on it. How can you concede in that position? And now we are losing against Freiburg because of that stupid mistake. Normally, Fehrmann never does something like that. Now Teixeira though decided to take things into his own hands. Teixeira with the shot and that one gets saved by the goalkeeper. And in the 90th minute, it's done. We have gotten a loss in the first match of today. We have lost. And if you guys noticed, on the top left of the screen, there was a glitch. It always said Bundesliga Schalke 04. But, uh, boys, we have gotten the first loss of the season. Bayern Munich only got a draw in their last match. So, we are only three points away from them. And take a look at this, boys. Leroy Sané, seven games played, three goals scored, 67 rated, 18 years old. I'm planning on loaning him out in the January transfer window to glitch him because I would love to to see this guy at like 80 or something that would be incredible so hopefully we'll be able to loan him out and play him in this starting lineup sometime in the future Schalke right now has to play against Wolfsburg though who are behind Bayern in my opinion the strongest team in the Bundesliga and you can see them starting off with their player Viarinha who now is a right back in real life and that could have been a penalty but the referee decided not to give it, which is good for me. Volant now on the ball, looking for his teammate, Paco Alcacer, making a decent run. He's inside now, but he just couldn't catch up with the ball. He touched it with his head, I think, and 
He just wasn't able to get to it. And now once again, Paco on the ball gets into the penalty area. Pass it over to Klaasen who tries his luck uh, with a turning shot in a 45th minute right before half time. But that one goes out to be a corner. Kevin Folland now with the cross over into the middle. And it gets saved on the line. Another chance coming out with Kolasinat. And his shot gets saved as well. Another chance with Draxler. And no, it just doesn't work out, boys. We were trying our best to score in that position. We should have scored. But talking about something that should happen is that he should get a red card for that tackle. And yes, he did. Gilavogi is now gone with a red card. And now we are playing against 10 men. That is a big advantage for our team. Teixeira now with the pass over to Paco Alcacer. Paco is through. 1-1 one -on -one against the keeper. Yes, he will score. Paco with the first goal of this match after missing a few opportunities to score. Paco is finally able to score for our team. A really nice run from him and that is 1-0 for Schalke against one of the biggest opponents in the Bundesliga and sadly straight after that Paco got injured Paco is injured and he has to go out and that was a moment of panic I, I just felt like if this guy gets injured for a long time I'm sat here for uh, having to play Chupa Moting and Sané. I, I mean, he, they're not bad, but Paco has 12 appearances in the league and six goals. So hopefully he'll be back very soon. But take a look at this last attack in the 89th minute. It is Teixeira with them skills getting inside and shooting right on the goalkeeper. But Teixeira, man, I seriously am learning to love him. He is such a good player. He's small. Yes, he is, but... He somehow gets the ball off defenders, uh, off attackers all the time. He can run forward, score goals, get assists. He can do anything on the pitch except taking long shots so far. I wasn't really able to get uh, decent long shots with him. But Paco is injured for four weeks. He's now gone for four weeks. And now two weeks have passed until the match against uh, Standard Liege. And take a look at this. He's back. Paco somehow miraculously came back from his injury after only two weeks and he's already saying i'm ready to play he wants to play this next match against standard liege but uh, as you can see it is an important match benfica and liverpool are right behind us benfica should be in the first position they have a better goal difference but we have beaten them so that's the reason we are in the first spot but liverpool only one point behind us so if we lose this match we would have had a big problem, but luckily Aogo, our left back, somehow scored two goals. Um, I don't know how that happened, but we have won against Standard Liège at home. So now we are on 10 points in the Champions League. Schalke is now on 29 points in the league and Bayern Munich on 32. Paco is once again back into the team. He will be playing in the left striker position. Kevin Folland now in the right striking position. Yes, the formation has changed once again. Chupo Moting, I want to play him on the right hand side. Teixeira plays in the center attacking midfield position. And Draxler will stick to the left hand side. And the first team that we are testing this formation on is FSV Mainz 05. The team that is really close to me, Eric Maxim Chupo Moting is a player that played for this team back in the day. So let's see what he can do against his former club. Folland starts it off though with a chance for Schalke in the fifth minute. And Paco Alcacer is just waiting for a big opportunity to score once again. Draxler with the pass over to Paco. This is his opportunity. He takes the shot, a finesse shot from a really weird angle. That one doesn't go in and take a look at this right here. It is Chupo Moting on the ball. He will pass it over to Paco, but that one doesn't land in front of him. And uh, Folland has a big chance to score, but that one goes over the crossbar. Mainz didn't have an attack until the 45th minute, and that one was dangerous. That could have definitely been a penalty once again. Another of our players do get injured, and it is uh, one of our... Beloved center backs, Matip, the tank in the center back position, is getting injured, so he's going out now. But Paco Alcacer wants to score one for him, and uh, sadly, he just misses this big opportunity to score. Man, I was expecting a goal for sure. Kevin Folland, Teixeira, Teixeira looking for someone. He does find a Draxler. No, sorry, it's Paco. Paco is through. 
And no, in the last split second, the defender is able to get between him and the goal. So Paco really trying and trying all the time, but didn't work out. So it was time for Leroy Sané to join in and also Maximilian Meyer in the cam position. Draxler still on the left-hand side. He will now look to cut inside. He does so, crosses it in. It is a big chance from Leroy Sané. But that one gets saved and Sané once again, this time, uh, this time, this time he tried to get a back heel goal in the air like Ibra. But that didn't work out. Unlucky for him. That could have been, that would have made him a legend. Sané, if you would have scored that one, you would have been an instant legend for this series. But Matip is gone for four weeks. The only thing we can hope for is that he'll be back as fast as Paco was, even though he was injured for four weeks. And one thing that I really, really wanted to talk about is this. Some of our players are growing really well. Hugo Malo is now 78 rated, Teixeira 82. Then the rest of the team, like Paco Alcacer, they are not growing. So you guys think I should loan them out in a January transfer window to fix their growth because Someone like Paco has very high potential and the fact that he's not growing is pissing me off. I want to put it like that, but yeah, I'm really not too happy with that. But the rest of the team, some of them are really growing well, but some of the players I really put a lot of emphasis on are not growing. So hopefully we can fix that. Take a look at the league table. We are currently three points behind Bayern Munich. And if you take a look at the top scoring list, the only one we have in there is still Paco Alcacer at the 10th spot. He's four goals away from Stefan Kiesling, from Bayer Leverkusen, who is in the first spot. But one thing that really, really made me think about how did I know this, how did I not know this player already was the growth of Hugo Malo and the way he played. Hugo Malo is actually an insane player. I mean, look at his stats. He's so young. Uh, yeah, he's five foot eight, which is not perfect for a right back, but this guy can do the job He's really good moving forward and crossing So because I noticed that I wanted to ask you assistant coaches Should I keep him forever in this series and never replace him because he seems to be growing But uh, thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed the link for the poll will be, will be in the description for Hugo Malo and uh, now enjoy the assistant coaches showcase